हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज सी एस फाइव टाचे कैन आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ बैंक एग्जाम टूडे थ्रू दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट आई बी पी एस एस ओ लॉ ऑफिसर एग्जामिनेशन हाउ इट इज कंडक्टेड एंड एंड हाउ मेनी सब्जेक्ट्स एंड लॉज वी नीड टू लर्न टू अपियर इन दिस एग्जामिनेशन ओके इफ एनी ऑफ यू आर ऑलरेडी अवेयर अबाउट द प्रोसेस एंड सिलेबस ऑफ दिस एग्जामिनेशन एंड वॉन्ट्स टू स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर दिस एग्जामिनेशन they can visit our website or they can contact us at given number you will be guided properly that how to enroll for this examination and how you can start your preparation our course is designed specifically for such students who wants to become a law officer in a banking industry while enrolling for our course kindly use this coupon code so that you can avail benefit our topic of discussion is indian contract act and in that multiple choice questions so we are going to solve few multiple choice questions of indian contract act with an explanation so let's solve our first question question number 1 when is the communication of proposals the acceptance of proposals and the revocation of proposals deemed to be made options are a only on clear verbal communication of such proposal acceptance or revocation option b by any act or omission of the party by which he intends to communicate such proposal acceptance or revocation or has the effect of communicating option number c only when the proposal acceptance or revocation of the proposal is recorded in writing or option number d only when the proposal acceptance or revocation of the proposal is received and understood by the other party receiving the information so which one is the correct answer the correct option is option number b which says by any act or omission of the party by which he intends to communicate such proposal acceptance or revocation or has the effect of communicating it as per section number 3 communication ex acceptance and revocation of proposals are deemed to be made as follows the communication of proposals the acceptance of proposals and the revocation of proposals and acceptances revocation of proposals and revocation of acceptances respectively are deemed to be made by any act or omission of the party proposing accepting or revoking by which he intends to communicate such proposal acceptance or revocation or which has the effect of communicating it okay let's move on to our next question that is question number 2 which says that when is the communication of a proposal complete when it comes to the knowledge of the person to whom it is made only when the proposal acceptance or revocation of the proposal is recorded in writing c when the other party gives his assent or dissent to the proposal d only when a clear verbal communication of such proposal is made so the correct option is option number a which says that when it comes to the knowledge of the person to whom it is made why because section number 4 says that communication when complete that means the communication of a proposal is complete when it comes to the knowledge of the person to whom it is made the communication of an acceptance is complete as against the proposer when it is put in a course of transmission to him so as to be out of the power of the acceptor as against the acceptor when it comes to the knowledge of the proposer question number 3 when can a proposal be revoked options option number a 
once a proposal is made it cannot be revoked option number b any time before or after the communication of acceptance is complete c any time before the communication of its acceptance is complete as against the proposal but not afterwards option number d any time before the proposal comes to the knowledge of the other party but not afterwards so the correct answer is option number c when can a proposal be revoked option number c any time before the communication of its acceptance is complete as against the proposal but not afterwards why the explanation is under ex ex section number 5 which deals with revocation of proposals and acceptances a proposal may be revoked at any time before the communication of its acceptance is complete as against the acceptor but not afterwards an acceptance may be revoked at any time before the communication of the acceptance is complete as against the acceptor but not afterwards moving on to our next question that is question number 4 a proposal cannot be revoked options are option number a by the communication of notice of a revocation by the proposal to the other party option number b by the failure of the acceptor to fulfill a condition precedent to acceptance option number c by the lapse of the time prescribed in such proposal for its acceptance and option number d by an act involving more moral turpitude of prop proposer whether related to the proposal or otherwise so what is the correct answer the correct answer is option number d which says that by an act involving moral turpitude of the proposal turpitude of the proposal whether related to the proposal or otherwise and it is backed by the section number 6 which says that revocation how made a proposal is revoked by the communication of notice of revocation by the proposer to the other part or by the lapse of the time prescribed in such proposal for its acceptance or if no time is so prescribed by the lapse of a reasonable time without communication of the acceptance by the failure of the acceptor to fulfill a condition precedent to acceptance or by the death or insanity of the proposer if the fact of his death or insanity comes to the knowledge of the acceptor before acceptance is so only these are the conditions when the proposal is revoked so here the answer is option number d next question which of the following is not a necessary feature to convert a proposal into a promise options option number a the acceptance must be absolute option b the acceptance must be within the prescribed time limit option number c the acceptance must be unqualified and option number d the acceptance must be expressed in some usual and reasonable manner so the answer is option number b the acceptance must be within the prescribed time limit why the explanation is under ex ex section number 7 that acceptance must be absolute in order to convert a proposal into a promise the acceptance must be absolute and unqualified second be expressed in some usual and reasonable manner unless the proposal prescribes the manner in which it is to be accepted if the proposal prescribes a manner in which it is to be accepted and the acceptance is not made in such manner the proposer may within a reasonable time after the acceptance is communicated to him 
insist that his proposal shall be accepted in the prescribed manner and not otherwise. But if he fails to do so, he accepts the acceptance. Okay. So, the acceptance must be within the reasonable prescribed time limit. When is the promise, see, promise said to be expressed? Options. Option number A. When the proposal or acceptance of any promise is made in words. Option B. When the proposal or acceptance of any promise is made through visual representation. Option number C. When the proposal or acceptance of any promise is made in any way other than words. Or option number D, when the proposal or acceptance is made by either in words or in any way other than words. So, the question says, when is the promise said to be expressed? The answer is option number A, when the proposal or acceptance of any promise is made in words. Promise expressed or inclined, implied. Section 9 says that in so far as the proposal or acceptance of any promise is made in words, the promise is said to be expressed in so far as such proposal or acceptance is made. Otherwise than in words, the promise is said to be implied. Question 7. Which of the following feature is not essential for a contract? Options are. Options A. It should be in writing only. Option B. Free consent of parties competent to contract. Option C. Lawful consideration and with a lawful object. Option D. It should not be declared void expressly. Which of the following feature is not essential for contract? That is, it should be in writing only. So, the section says that what agreements are contract? All agreements are contract if they are made by a free consent of parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and will with a lawful object and are not hereby expressly declared to be void. Nothing here in content shall affect any law in force in India and not hereby expressly repealed by which any contract is required to be made in writing or in the presence of witnesses or any law relating to the registration of document. Who among the following is not competent to contract? Options. Option number A. Person who has acquired the age of 18. Option number B. Person who has acquired the age of 16. Option number C. Person is of a sound mind. Option number D. Person who is disqualified from contracting by any law. So, the correct answer is option number B. Person who has acquired the age of 16. Why? Because as per section number 11, who are competent to contract? Every person is competent to contract who is of the age of majority according to the law to which he is subject and who is of a sound mind and is not disqualified from contracting by any law to which he is subject. Question 9. What is consent under the Indian Contract Act 1872? Options are when acceptance of proposal is made by the party to whom the proposal is made, when the acceptance is made by another person other than the person to whom the proposal is made. Option number C. When they agree upon the same thing in the same sense. When both the parties agree upon a thing in the same way it is understood by them. So, what is the consent? Consent is when they agree upon the same thing in the same sense. As per section 13, 
consent is two or more persons are said to consent when they agree upon the same thing in the same sense question number 10 which of the following is not a necessary feature for a free consent options option number a when the consent is not caused by coercion option b when the consent is not forced by undue influence option c when the consent is not caused by mistake option d when the consent is not caused by misunderstanding the answer is when the consent is not caused by misunderstanding is not a necessary feature of a free consent so section 14 says that consent is said to be free when it is not caused by coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation or mistake consent is said to be so caused when it would not have been given but for the existence of such coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation or mistake okay thank you everyone if you have any doubt regarding this 10 questions you can call us at a bank exams today thank you